Hello everyone and welcome to part 3 of Paying the Bills with Accents, the African edition. So this is part 3 of the series. In part 1 we looked at the general advice and how you can get started with, with AdSense. And in part 2 we looked at blogging and what you should blog about, what you should not try to blog about and how you can go about gaining traffic using your, your niche that you would have selected to, to blog about. Okay, so in, in this session, in part three, we are going to be looking at the technical aspects of setting up your blog. We are going to get to, to the mobile apps eventually. Right now, we're still just looking at the blogs. So we are going to look at the technical aspects of, of setting up your blog. Now, one thing that we have to get out of the way before we, we go on is that you do not need to be a computer programmer to set up your blog and you do not need to hire a computer programmer to set up your blog for you. You can do this all by yourself. It's all very easy. And if you do decide to go and pay idiot tax for someone to overcharge you to set this up, then that's your fault and it's your own loss. But you can do this by yourself. Okay, so do not forget to hit the like button and also hit the subscribe button to be notified when we release more awesome content for you to consume for free. Now, back to our technical talk on starting your blog. The first part that we're going to talk about is choosing a web host. Now, choosing a good web host is something that's very critical, so that's why it's first. Choosing a web host is very important. Now, locally we have WebDev. And WebDev is perhaps, I guess, the biggest web hosting company we have in Zimbabwe. I would say uh, we do not opt for WebDev. Why? I have two very important reasons. Now, the first one is back when we tried hosting our websites with with WebDev, they had customer support that worked only on the weekend, only on Monday to Friday. They would switch off their phones and go home for the weekend. Now imagine you are a young Jeff Bezos and you do not have a, your own AWS yet and you host your e-commerce platform with WebDev. And then something stupid happens and your website is down on Friday at midnight. Your website is going to be down from Friday at midnight up until Monday morning when you can call them to get the issue rectified. That is a whole two days of you just losing money, sitting there losing money and nothing is happening. So that was a big turn off for us. It was a no-no for us. So we say no web dev. And then the other thing about web dev is their downtime is not really documented. We, we don't really know how well their platform behaves or performs. Other guys have a, an, an uptime of like 99.9%. Some guys, they say 99.6%. We don't know what it is for web dev and no one can really testify or attest to that. So is it worth risking your, your web platform for? I would say no. First as the, the convenience that they are giving you, like you can get to call them and they can rectify your problem quickly. That's one advantage. Then the other advantage that they have is they are a local company, so you can pay them using EcoCash, which is easily accessible. It's easier to get in, in Zimbabwe than, than, than US dollars. So you have to choose whether that's what you want to go for versus the trade-offs. The next host I would dissuade you from looking at is HostGator. Now with HostGator, we had a great relationship and everything was going great for more than a year up until they stole money from our credit cards. They billed us twice for hosting and they took the money twice from our bank accounts. I do not know what happened there, but we had to get our banks go gangster and mafia on them to try and return the money. So we just got them to return both the money for actual hosting plus the extra that they charged and we shut down our account with them and we moved on who do we use now now we mostly use GoDaddy and Hostinja I am going to call it Hostinja my colleague insists that it's Hostinja but I'm telling you call it Hostinja if you don't we're going to have a problem so call it Hostinja so that's what we use for our websites. That's both in-house and for stuff that we do for, for other people and other external organizations. So that's it on picking a host and we are going to continue after this short break. Okay, so welcome back to part three of Paying the Bills with AdSense, the African edition. 
in the last segment we looked at picking a host and now we are going to talk about choosing a choosing a domain yes picking a good domain for your blog platform oh guys i'm sorry hold on uh, mom please get out of my room can't you see i'm not busy i'm working here um no okay i'll, I'll have i'll have um i'll have a grape juice and fry my eggs don't overcook them okay now get out please okay sorry about that guys so picking a good domain for for your web host for your your blog i mean and this is something that people tend to overlook now when um my friend and i were starting out or is it i and my friend english okay so when we were starting out we had an idea to buy a blog uh, domain and start a blog the domain was zimbabwe.co.zw i mean how cool is that imagine holding that domain but when we tried to buy it uh, zispa the regulatory board internet people people they said no you can't buy that domain that was a bummer so what should we have done should we have gone with um, my awesome beautiful zimbabwe.co.zw i mean that's a seriously very very long domain and it's not memorable it's not short it's not something someone can instinctively and naturally type into the, the web browser and they have to have it bookmarked or saved somewhere that's going to hit your traffic in the long run trust me so instead of choosing a blog that says uh things crazy things happening in africa just say crazyafrica.com that's much better right and then the next thing with choosing your domain should you go with .co .zw or go with .com i say go with both buy the cozw buy the .com and redirect them to the same place and then they'll be pointing to the same web hosting platform right so they'll be pointing to the same website just like how google does it google has .co .zw .com .co .za everywhere .co .us i'm sure so just do that a domain is going to set you back five dollars a year that is nothing five us dollars a year should be less than seven cents or is it seven parts of a cent for each day until the 360 days go so are you telling me you can't save seven cents every day for a whole year you are not serious with your blog then so that's it and then the last part now this is something sort of well it's just something to prepare for and look out for don't let your host, your web host, also hold your domain in case you guys have a dispute. What we do is we have someone else holding our domain. We buy it from someone else and we go and have our website hosted by um, GoDaddy. That way, if we have an argument or we have a problem with GoDaddy in future, we simply walk away from them and they're not going to be holding anything of ours we can just redirect our website to somewhere else we have our domain and we're done so it's just something that you should do don't let them hold too much power over you it's just a small tip nothing really technical so that's it for choosing a domain let me just turn my page here now the next thing is uh the nerds remember i told you at the start of this video that you do not need to be a programmer or a software developer to set up your own blog i am going to dissuade you from coding to set up your blog just use a cms we are trying to make money in as little time as possible and as quickly as possible it's going to be easier to just use a cms that's already working than trying to program your own platform by yourself and start debugging it and, and whatnot so which cms do we go with i think the top three that i know of are wordpress joomla and wix i've used wordpress and i use wordpress all the time i've never used joomla but i've also played around with wix a bit but i do not have any live websites that use wix so i will just say go with wordpress and you're all set up and we are going to look at the next section which is going to be setting up um, an analytics platform you need to set up google analytics for your web host 
there is a Jetpack, is it Jetpack? Yes, I think it's Jetpack plugin. Um, it does the whole analytics thing for you, but we've noticed that their statistics, they tend to be weird. Because I remember one website that had, it's a Zimbabwean website, I do not remember the name. It had like a million views a month according to Jetpack. But with that much traffic, those guys should have been like maybe number in the top five in Zimbabwe. But they were, I think, number 200 and something in Zimbabwe on websites. So that was very, very weird. So just set up Google Analytics and rely on them to give you analytical data so you can see who is visiting your website, when are people visiting your website. That kind of information, it will be great to analyze and use to monitor your blog and also decide which areas to concentrate on and which areas to leave alone. And then the last thing we are going to talk about with this sort of technical session is limit the plugins that you add to your platform. Don't keep installing plugins and installing plugins. The moment you have like 50 plugins in your, web, in your WordPress blog, then you have a problem. It's also going to impact how quickly your website loads in the long run. So limit the number of plugins. You don't really need a thousand billion plugins. Just install WordPress, get your premium paid theme and get something that's going to help you build your pages and make them look fancy and nice. And I think you're all set. And after that, you add Google Analytics. And then with time, when they approve you, you can also add Google AdSense to your blog. All right, guys, so that's it for the technical session of how to set up your blog and get things done. This is not a tutorial per se. There are a lot of tutorials on how to set up your WordPress blog. Here, I'm just showing you that you do not need to be full on a technical nerd to try and get your, your own blog set up and you don't have to go out and pay someone else to do it for you. So that's it, guys. Thank you for listening. Thank you for staying with us. And we are going to see you in part four of paying the bills with AdSense, the African edition. Trust me, if you keep following, you are going to become a hundred dinner on your blog. That is, you're going to make a hundred bucks. I'm not going to promise you a million bucks. Not yet. Okay, guys. So see you next time. And don't forget to like and subscribe.